On today's ChurchTechCast.com screencast show, Pro 5 Countdown over a live website, YouTube links, and live streaming. Hi, and welcome again to the ChurchTechCast.com screencast show. This is the show where every week I answer your church tech questions. My name is Paul Allen Clifford, and I'm your host. Love for you to join the conversation, by the way, so just do that below the video. If you're listening to the audio, that's great, too. I love you audio listeners as well, so I thought that I'd tell you, you can drop me a line, paul at trinitydigitalmedia.com, or head over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash contact. That's a great way to reach me as well. So we've got some great church tech questions, which I've printed out here on this piece of paper, so let's just dive right into those. Todd Carter on Twitter asks, are you away, aware of a way to use a ProPresenter message countdown over a live web page? Any help is appreciated. So just to clarify what he meant, we went back and forth, and apparently there's some content on a website that he wants on the screen, but he also wants a countdown. A little bit of a head-scratcher because uh, there's really no feature in ProPresenter 5 that can do that. Now, ProPresenter 6 kind of can do it, but not like with video on YouTube or something like that. So the question is, how would you accomplish that? I have a solution. There is some free software called CamTwist, C-A-M-T-W-I-S-T, and what it can do is it can take any image in a window on your website and make that appear to software as though that it is a webcam. So why would you want to do this? Well, if you have a window on, on your screen that you need to be sent over the internet, or in this case, put into ProPresenter, ah, that's how we do it. So basically you do that, you bring up the web page, you put it in one of your windows, and then you say, this right here, this thing, this is now a camera. And ProPresenter, when you say, hey, where are my camera? Oh, I'll take the CamTwist camera. And then you just put that up like it's a webcam. Problem solved. Here's the gotcha, though. It's not going to be nearly as responsive as a real camera. You, it might, there might be a little latency. It's not perfect, but it could work. So I think that's uh, one thing I would do. You could do something on the web page side of things, like put the web page in an iframe and then put a countdown over the web page using Flash or something like that. That's going to be more on the website side of things than to do this in ProPresenter, but you ask for ProPresenter, so that's uh, exactly how I would do that. Andy Robinson on YouTube, in response to one of my videos a couple of weeks ago on Tech Help for Churches, my Monday show, says, Paul, this sounded like a useful technique, but I was unsuccessful. I tried it in two different browsers, and it just started at the beginning. Did I do something wrong? Here's the link I tried. And then he has the link. So there are a couple of things that he missed. First, he missed a letter T in the link, and secondly... I wouldn't use the full YouTube link, I'd use the short YouTube link. So if you want to uh, connect directly to a portion of a video in YouTube, first start off by typing YouTube, just the word YouTube, but put the dot right before the BE, then slash, and then the code of the video, the video ID code. In this case, it's MA, capital W, capital E, capital H, capital T, capital N, 8, capital W, M, K. That is the YouTube link. Then you end that with question mark equals, uh, actually I think it's question mark T equals, and then the number for hours, 
which you can leave out if it's less than an hour long, and then the letter H per hour. So one H, uh, let's say 15 minutes, one five M, and two seconds, two S. Now you can leave out the leading zero in each of those numbers if it's uh, less than 10 or 20 or whatever, but that's how you would do that. So those were the two mistakes he made and we were able to find it pretty quickly. So Rex uh, sent me an email and he said, hi Paul, and I've cut this down a lot, but it's still a little longish, so bear with me. Hi Paul. I imagine you get a lot of emails starting out with, my church wants to start live streaming. And I've seen quite a few of your videos addressing the different parts of that question. And I've even read an article you wrote two years ago on Church Tech Today. That's back when I started live streaming. My church also wants to, uh, uh, to start streaming and that ministry has found me. Well, that's the way it is. You're technical and your church puts the ministry with you. Turns out Rex is a photographer. Uh, maybe we'll read that if I didn't cut it out. I'll try to keep this as short as possible, but I feel like I have a lot of questions. Your earliest recommendations for live streaming was using a camera and a computer. I have no background in video production, so that was my initial plan as well. But I'm learning, and your latest recommendation skips the computer instead uses the following, and he lists my recommendations, uh, including the Video Teradec encoder, uh, which is a little box. This is one from BoxCast. Uh, if you're listening to the audio, you can't see it, but it's um, maybe the size of a couple of decks of cards. It's not very big, but it frees up your computer. Though I originally thought it would be best to get started with one camera and a streaming PC, possibly skipping a capture card if the camera was capable of a USB connection, you've since convinced me of using a hardware switching two cameras. But it seems that the ATEM still needs a computer for control. I don't think we should buy a $500 controller just to get started. I agree. They need a cheaper option to, for the controller to get started. I'm not a video guy, and though I know computers, computer hardware is not my field of expertise, especially when dealing with video production. So is a $700 computer not enough to replace a video? Should I budget in a $300 computer to run the ATEM? Is a streaming computer more GPU or CPU heavy? Is it bad advice to stream and control the ATEM on the same computer? So many questions. Hope you have a wonderful day. Your neighbor from Indiana, Rex. Well, uh, so to answer your question, the controller software for the ATEM Television Studio and the better ATEM switchers, because the Television Studio is entry level and they just get better from that, is really lightweight stuff. Basically, it's like going to a web page. It's that kind of lightweight. So yeah, a $300 computer would be fine. I wouldn't want to encode and run the switcher on the same computer. But if you had the Teradec video or video or this box cast box, uh, if you had something like that that did the heavy lifting of the encoding, then I think I would feel very comfortable in doing that. At my church, we used, uh, I think it was a MacBook or a MacBook Air one of those two to control the television studio worked perfectly fine. Um, it could be that you already have a computer that's capable of doing that since it's really a lightweight operation. But you're right, for encoding purposes, you're probably going to want a pretty heavy duty computer, especially if you're going to do any flavor of HD. So if you're doing 720p, 1080i, 1080p, 4K, really, you're talking super beefy machines. Like um, I was at doing some freelancing for a local racetrack, and they had a, a, a nice rack-mounted server, and it was dropping frames because of their HD feed that they were putting into it. So 
And that, I believe they were using Wirecast. So they were using an encoder that's a little bit better built, encoding software that's a little bit better built than the Adobe Flash Media Live Encoder. Adobe Flash Media Live Encoder is free, but you pay for it in performance. Uh, Wirecast is not free, so you pay for it in money, but it, it tends to require a less beefy PC. So when you think, okay, $500 for Wirecast plus $700, $900 for a computer to use it, plus a capture card. Next thing you know, you're like $1,500, and the Teradek video is $700. Actually, they've got a new one that's five. So with that said, it's really kind of difficult to justify, especially if there's any chance whatsoever that someone at the church is going to go, we've got this great computer, I'll totally use it during the week, and gack up your project production on the weekend. So you really don't want to do that. That's why, that's really the thing that tipped me over, is uh, the idea of someone messing up the encoding computer during the week. And they're just not going to do that with an encoding device. Well, I hope that helps you. So if you uh, didn't get your question answered today, by all means, leave them below the video or send me an email paul at trinitydigitalmedia.com. If you like this content, you'll love my email newsletter, I promise. It's free, or I'll give you your money back. All free of it. So head over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash gifts, that's with an S, G-I-F-T-S, and there's free church tech goodies there for you. You can grab those and a free subscription to my email newsletter. Remember, money-back guarantee if not delighted by the free newsletter uh, that's my new slogan just came up with it um, so i'll give you more church tech tips there and uh, some training as well if you like this content you might like my store as well that's uh, located at trinitydigitalmedia.com store there i've created all sorts of church tech resources for you to make you more effective and to give you back a little more time to spend with your family and do ministry, both. Until next time, go out and change eternity. This is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com.